everyone, welcome back to Starry Flowers. Um, on the last episode, we left off on Periwinkle, like, laying out his feelings onto Astrogal. It's basically, like, actually talking to someone about his feelings. Because he hasn't really done that to anyone. So, we'll see how it goes. I told her everything I could think of. My first impressions of him, how he continuously subverted my expectations, my mistakes, appearing where I shouldn't have, then going into a desperate spiral as I tried to rid myself of the guilt over it. Now he was the one to come apologize afterwards. Our date that day, which was so, so wonderful, but which also they bear the feelings I was too afraid to acknowledge. How I lashed onto any alternative explanation I could in order to escape them. The moment I could finally admit it to myself, all the ways he's changed my life for the better. How we grew closer and closer while I held those feelings tighter in my chest. I told her how he finally worked up the courage to introduce me to his friends. How his hand trembled in mine as we walked out the door together. His point of contention, a far off goal I have decided, decided would have to be met before advancing. Everything up to the state I'm in now, useless, paralyzed, and sobbing. Astragal has listened patiently through all of it. He has questions from time to time, clarification on the time frame, certain details. Her reaffirming comments offered such comfort, such relief, through this pain I kept confined to my own heart. Until finally, I had nothing left to say. Astragal sits back in her chair and heaves a sigh. So, how are you feeling? There's a certain clarity in laying it all out at once. But I still don't know what I can do to push things forward. Could I even handle the rejection? He won't reject you. What makes you so certain? That boy is madly in love with you. Why else would he devote all the time and energy to making you happy? Oh yeah, it's not obvious. Because I'm great in bed, obviously. Quit deflecting. You know that's not all that it is. I don't want to leave my rainy room for any doubt. If I were to confess now, and it didn't go well, I... I'd be destroyed beyond prepared. That's why, if I'm going to say it, I want to be a sure thing. Life ain't about sure things. Even so, I'm going to wait for the opportune moment before exposing my vulnerable heart. As long as you've got a plan. Astragalus leans down to pick up Periwinkle's empty mug and holds it out in front of him. Try your magic again. Whatever saying you want, just pour it right into the cup. Periwinkle nervously draws his wand, holds it out to the cup, then closes his eyes and taps. Is it... Chamomile? It isn't peach? I'm cured! <laughs> yeah, I need to talk about it. Yeah, dumbass, you forget this in apothecary. Ah, it is, isn't it? Next time you have a problem with your magic, don't sit around crying about it on your own. Come straight to me and I'll fix you up. Thank you, I... I'm truly glad we're friends. I would be lost without you. Mrs. Associates, don't forget I've got loads of orders for you now that you're back to normal. I'll go home and fill them right away, but first, may I hug you? Not a chance. Hmm, it was worth a shot. You'll accept my platonic affection one day. Yeah, yeah, get out of my office, Periwinkle. The pair exit the back room, but they only make it a few steps out before Periwinkle turns on his heel. Ah, and one more thing before I go. What's up? I've been curious to ask. The last time I was here, you told me that magic can be interpreted as a judge of one's character. Alright, when I change my mind about the still. Yes, precisely. It's rather impressive that you could see through to his true nature despite having only just met. Sure, but he was pretty easy to read. Don't be too impressed. Well, but what? What does my magic say about me? I'm dying to know. Your magic was always lively and carefree. Compassionate, too, like the stills. How can you possibly read something like carefree from perfume? Hey, I'm just telling you the vibes I've gotten over the years. Your aromas prioritize pleasure, but there was definitely a hint of loneliness in them, too. Well, right now that I know you're making things up. <laughs> sure. I've always had someone to keep me company. Just because you are always got someone around doesn't mean you can't be lonely. I suppose someone like you would know a thing or two about loneliness, hmm? I'm not lonely at all. In fact, I prefer to be alone. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that obvious? 
you, on the other hand, can't stand it even for a second. That's why you always run off chasing someone to fill the void. Well, that certainly isn't true. The beach that you gave me earlier was purr loneliness. It was crying out like, Please, but still, never leave me. This isn't funny anymore. Forget that I asked. Sorry, I couldn't resist. I suppose you're right, though. I haven't been able to tell him in words. I can keep holding back. He has to know, no matter the outcome. Good luck, okay? I'm sure it'll turn out just fine. Yes, yes, it likely will. Thank you again. I'm truly grateful for all that you've done for me. Astragalus waves him off, and Perico leaves the apothecary with a new resolve. Right, so we will meet him. I spent the next several weeks catching up on my work. Macaculli does come so easily with a clear mind. If only I swallowed my pride sooner. I completed the batch after batch almost effortlessly, going down the long checklist I Sergalas had given me. I hadn't even felt tired by the end of it, as if all this energy had been stored up inside me all along. It was a relief to return to somewhat normalcy. Think it but still no longer caused my heart to ache, at least not enough to put me in a state of total disposant disposant despondence. Instead, those thoughts served as motivation. The way forward was clear. I would tell him how I felt, and surely, surely things will turn out just fine. The following night, Pasto shows up on Paramuckle's doorstep. Get dressed, I want to take you somewhere. Oh, and where exactly am I being whisked away to? You'll see, wear comfortable shoes, okay? How mysterious. <sighs> Very well, I'll be there momentarily. This is it. The dramatic confession scene is upon us. I have to look my best, for good luck, of course. And for confidence. I look your best? Oh, I don't know. Yes, where's this flower choker? Uh, let's wear these ribbons, yeah. I wish you got a hat, but you know, whatever. More what we have. Hand in hand, the pair makes their way to the train station. Hmm, had you been planning something while I was sequestered away with my work? But still, it's always so full of surprises. How positively delightful. I hope I didn't interrupt any plans you have for tonight. No, oh, not at all. It was about time I had got out of the house again. We've actually had a very productive past several days, you know, toiling away over my perfumes. <sighs> I thought that may might be the case, since you haven't dropped by in a while. Do you miss me? Oh, well. Miracle hugs Bastille's arm tightly as they continue their walk. I missed you too. When Bastille and I step off the train, we're greeted by grassy fields and a sky full of luminous stars. Just where has he taken me? A trail of lanterns lights the lone path forward. Bastille takes the lead. It's a bit of a walk from here, but I promise it will be worth it. It's a long walk, hmm? Can we take a ride on your broom together? Nah, it's to defeat the purpose. It'll feel more like more rewarding getting there on foot. <sighs> Fair enough. Tra tragic though that you wouldn't pass on an opportunity for me to cling to you. <sighs> we can fly on the way back if you want. So offers his hand again, which Paracle takes with a smile. Tell me more about your relationship with magic. What? What do you mean? It was the same when you cleaned my house together. You insist on doing things manually. I mind it at all, seeing you lift so many heavy things with the treat in itself. <sighs> well, ever since I was young, it was clear I was, um, ridiculously talented, talented, as they put it. My mom wanted me to be a traditional witch. They wrote me in one of the top schools so I could learn from the best. It was an all girl school, though. I guess I was young enough to realize that no one, no one realized I was a boy. I really didn't belong there, on any level. But I kept it as long as I could, just enough to keep my parents happy until I could go out and live on my own. <sighs> I still don't understand exactly why, but I always felt uncomfortable using my magic. It felt like cheating, like this kind of power shouldn't come so easily. So I thought so too, I guess that's why I lashed onto her when I met. She used to really hate magic, which worked out with me perfectly. It was a good excuse to pretend to be a regular human like her. So that's what I did for the past seven years. Seven years? That's quite a long time. Yeah, but there's a lot to distract me back then. 
took a while to get Azulir's sweets up and running. And so I did eventually find out. I thought she disowned me from when she did. But instead she told me I shouldn't have hit it. Even though I doubt we would have become friends if I told her from the beginning. Quite impossible to please, hmm? You have no idea. <laughs> but ever since she said that, I've been able to start embracing magic again. On my own terms. I'm beginning to grasp why he values her so highly. I'm sorry, I just keep talking about myself. Don't apologize, I'm the one who asked. Besides, I'm content to listen. Say as much as you like. Thanks. Farago gives Bastille's hand a reassuring squeeze. I love him. I had to find the right moment to tell him that. Should it be now, during this romantic walk? Ah, uh, but he still has yet to reveal our destination. What do you have in store for me, Bastille? I think I might be too used to how Sai is. She's usually so preoccupied with her own stuff, so it's nice having someone who actually wants to listen to me. Ugh, that makes her sound like a horrible friend. She's really not. You certainly haven't made a convincing case for her. Ugh, I know, but that wasn't the point I was trying to make. Oh? I really... Yes? Let me start over. Sale takes a deep breath before continuing. Going back to what we were talking about before, with my magic and everything, I think I have trouble accepting myself for what I am, and I tend to hide things even when I don't need to. Being with you feels like it's better not to hide, like I'm allowed to just be, or more like celebrated for being, I don't know, that feels weird to say. You can stop me from being too much. It's because I love you, why can't I just say that? Oh, we're here. We are. A place full of stars. When we came up over the hill, the vastness of the night sky overwhelmed me. But more than that, the field of small blue flowers that stretched as far as an eye could see matches so perfectly. But still, they're periwinkles. When I looked up where to find some, I found out about this place. Apparently, it's a famous date spot. Thought you'd like to see it, so I. I, uh, I shouldn't have told you that I'm weak to romance, but still. A glint catches Pranicle's eye and he looks up to notice a meteor shower has begun. Ah, oh good, it started just in time. You planned this too? Well, I knew this was supposed to happen tonight, so... But still. <laughs> Pranicle tackles but still to the ground, landing down in the field of flowers. This is perfect. I don't know what else to say, I'm speechless. <sighs> I guess I went a little overboard. A little, this is the most romantic thing anyone's ever done for me. He buried his face in Pastel's chest, holding him close. Well, there's actually one more thing I want to say. He feels Pastel's heart pounding. <sighs> Where do I start? Um, you know how Sai and Gumdrop are really important to me? I always thought I needed to keep myself available for them, to take care of the story and everything. But in practice, that just meant I never really took any time for myself. Like, my own needs were something I could just bury and it would be fine because it's for their sake. I guess that's part of why I go out with random guys in secret. That's something just for me. Totally detached from everything else. I tried having a real relationship once. It didn't work out, obviously. I never told Sai about him. But that made me think that I was right to continue on the way I had been, since I wasn't willing to let my priority shift. Prayer grips Bastille's cloak a little tighter. What are you saying? I guess, um, that with you, I don't mind it as much. He, he's going to beat me to it at this rate. I can't let that happen. Prayer suddenly rolls himself on top of Bastille, pinning him down. Still, I'm in love with you. Uh, what? Since when? <laughs> I don't know, maybe this whole time? I only admitted it to myself that morning, you made me pancakes. That's what it took? Why? How long have you felt this way? Since having to carry you home after spending the day together? I think that's when I first realized it. Then why did you say something? I've been suffering in silence this entire time. I thought you wanted to keep it casual. We saw each other almost every other day, how is that casual? But he never acted any differently, and I was busy sorting my, through my own feelings anyway. Mmm, so was I. But that's no excuse for how long you kept me waiting. I won't forgive you. What? Why are you smiling like that? It's cute, saying you all worked up like this. 
Miracle struggles to his feet and begins stomping away. <laughs> you, you could have saved me a lot of heartache, you know. Basil sits up, straining out his cloak and retrieving his hat. Where are you going? Come back. No, I'm too upset. Perry. I was convinced, convinced that I cursed myself with some kind of love potion. My fake of aphrodisiac turned real. What in the world? <laughs> okay, because we didn't freak that day. Freaking was supposed to be the entire point of it. Perry. Everything's borrowed out of control since then. I couldn't stop thinking about you. You broke my magic. For weeks and weeks, all I could conjure was that stupid peach blossom scent. Oh, really? Yes, until just yesterday, which I spent crying in the dusty back room of the apothecary, telling us to up all about it. After all that, everything I have spent so long preparing for my heart for, you will have the nerve to try to confess first. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. I already said I won't forgive you. What do you want me to do then? I don't know. Kiss me if you love me so much. So approaches, gently raising a hand to Parenthood's cheek. And does exactly as he's told. I love you. Pernicle's heart skips a beat. I love you too. He hugs Bastille carefully. Careful not to knock him over this time. Takes everything I've got to keep myself from bursting into tears. I remember my makeup on this perfect day. This beautiful place that Bastille chose just for us. I can have my memory of this perfect night obscured by tears. Looks like the mirror shower is over. Take me home. Are you still mad at me? I'm not mad at you. I've never seen you like this. I don't know how else I should interpret it. I'm overwhelmed, elated, relieved, and frustrated. I want to get in bed so that you can hold me close all night. I don't think I'll be convinced that this is real unless you do that, so please? That sounds really nice. Okay, if it's to convince you, I guess I have no choice. So pretty in pink Against the starry night sky Without you my heart would sink So I can tell you why The world has to move And with that we have to make do But I don't want to do anything without you so now you know what I think you look so pretty in pink Thank you for reading Starry Flowers, a beautiful memoir. I think it's a memoir detailing my first experience with true love. As a reward for finishing the story, you may now access the extra scenes and bonus chapters along with a lovely image gallery. Memoir, Perry, how detailed is this? Don't worry, my sweet. I've kind of skipped over all, this <laughs> all those scenes, so you have nothing that we're embarrassed about. The stuff leading up to those is still embarrassing. How much did you leave in? Oh, it doesn't matter. This isn't canon. Merely an excuse to speak directly to the reader. I would never reveal such private details about you, such as your fetishes, without your explicit consent. Ah, <sighs> that's enough. End the scene. Please enjoy the bonus material. Thanks again. <laughs> and the, that's the end of Story Flowers. Uh, I was not expecting that song at the end. It was adorable. <laughs> absolutely love the song. When I 
watched Bad, someone play um, Bad End Theater, and the song, I just fell in love with that song, I forgot what the, I forgot what the song was called, at the end of Bad End Theater, but I really, really enjoyed listening to that song, it was just really, really cute, mm, there's a lot of extra switching them down, there's bonus chapters, art gallery, extra scenes, Busted lamp. Today Esther goes to ask, but still to work his magic on her busted lamp. He happily agrees. Meanwhile, Paracle looks on, his arms folded and pouting. There is, how's it look? Hmm, it's not exactly like it was before, but beggars can't be choosers. I'd help if I knew the original shape. I had to guess from looking at the pieces. Nah, better this than a pile of glass. Thanks, kiddo. <sighs> you should probably do something to fix your boyfriend's face next. My face doesn't need fixing. I'm looking flawless as ever. Perry, if you're finished being used, however, I'd like to have you back now, please. It's just a small favor. I really don't mind. In fact, I'm happy to help. See, he's more than willing. Stop exploiting his kindness. <laughs> Let me know if there's anything else I can fix for you, ma'am. Now that you mention it, I'm sure there were a few other things. I'll be right back. Ostrogoas takes her repair lamp and heads into her office to retrieve the next broken object. Perry, it's really nothing to get upset over. It's just an excuse for us to get to know each other better. I'd rather you not be categorized as a tool in her mind, but if you insist, I'll let her know if she starts asking too much of me. So, no more pouting, okay? <sighs> How could I refuse such a gentle command? As long as you're in a better mood now. I am, besides, it was quite hilarious to hear you call her ma'am in earnest. Uh, she's older than us, isn't she? We should expect our elders. Ah, uh, but still, if you call her an elder to her face, she'll go absolutely ballistic. Turns out there were a few things I've gotten right here. Oh, look at that. You really did fix this. This fix his face. Damn, nice work. Listen, Astragolis, you'll never guess what Basil just said. Wait, you're telling her? Didn't you just say she'll get mad? What am I about to get mad at? Were you saying something behind my back? Uh, Perry, please, I'm innocent. Alright. Um, let's see the art gallery. There's bonus chapters in the art gallery. Alright, there's different types. Alright, that's the end of the story over here. Um, I'll make an episode basically dedicated to the extras and the bonus episodes. This is overall, I always love Nom Nom Nami's games. This is a really cute game, and I also love the song at the end. The comments are always so nice and sweet. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Bye!